talk about Queensbury and fight. Let's talk about this facility because if you're going to breed the next heavyweight champion of the world, you've got to get him uh, some type of Ivan Drago layer, haven't you? <laughs> and this is a serious setup for Daniel Dubois. It is. You know, Tony and Martin Bowers have done a tremendous job here. They own the Peacock in London and they've built this out in in, in Epping. Yeah. And it's, uh, I mean, it's a, a marvellous facility. The gym's brilliant. You know, a couple of rings they've got. All, obviously, all the equipment that boxers need, and also what goes on behind the scenes. They've got the You've seen the the, um, the pool they put in out there for it. any boxers got injuries and so on. This is a tremendous facility, and this is what this is what elite fighters deserve. And they have elite fighters, and certainly in Daniel Dubois, you know the best young heavyweight prospects in the world. And they built a facility to match his, his ambitions. How much has the game changed in your years covering well, I, this sport, sir? Most of the gyms, <laughs> when I, you know, when I started out, they're all above. Like, Pubs. Yeah, yeah. They were upstairs in the big rooms above pubs. Pay your chips for nutrition. I can remember <laughs> Freddie Hill who trained the Finnegan Brothers on a Sunday. We'd go down after, because my cousin Johnny Wall was a fighter. I'd go and watch him train and then we'd go downstairs afterwards in the pub and he'd buy them all a Guinness each. <laughs> Straight after training? On a Sunday, yeah. He'd let them have a Guinness. It's changed a lot then because this place lot, is yeah. top class, like you said, recovery is yeah. a big part of it now yeah. and the facilities that these guys have got yeah. in the room next yeah. door to us yeah. is yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's amazing, it's, you know, it's, it's a more scientific approach, but that's, that's, that, you know, that's how things move on, we're in the 21st century now. Yeah. Speaking of scientific approach, how difficult has this period been compared to how you're normally used to working where it's quite easy to get fighters together to jet someone in from wherever it may be in the world? Well, the first thing is the travelling, and obviously in the restrictions and the corridors and isolations and all these sort of things. That's been a major problem, and the amount of fights you can have on a card yeah. and getting guys, getting guys out, trying to get them work and keep everyone busy. That's a challenge. Um, the medical aspect of it is a huge challenge. And remember, we started before anybody else as promoters. Uh, we did three shows before anybody, so we were quite pioneering in in the effort and work we put into it to ensure that the environment that they were fighting in, because we was in, you know, it was totally new, yeah. a new world for us all, that it was safe. Mm. So Andy Alien from my office, who um, is our events manager, done a really good job on that side of it. And I was really pleased that, and I hope I'm not tempting fate now, that when I've seen some of the shows on around the world, certainly Bob Arrow shows, he's had about four or five people go down with COVID. We've been quite lucky, mm -hmm. but we've been diligent with it. And that's one of the reasons the change of Daniel Dubois' opponent. We've got to be rigid with what this is. If guys don't come in with the right medicals, yeah. then I can't wait for them to come over here to have their MRI scan, and they may fail it, and then I can't get a replacement. That's how that came about. Especially when you have a press conference eight weeks before, and he has another fighter the promoter while it's you fought Joe Joyce and gives you the correct medicals. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame, but anyway, Daniel's fighting and that's the main thing. But that, that's been the, that was, that's been the challenge, the medical aspects of it. We're hoping we're going to get some bums on seats in the next uh, few months. It depends what happens with the football. Um, they're looking to get 30% up in some of the stadiums. And we've got to see where we go. Although 30% is better than nothing, it's still yeah, tough. because. It's not like, oh, you, you know, say you go to the O2, oh, you can put four, five thousand people in there. You're not going to be able to put more all there to create this atmosphere. Yeah. You've got to space them all out around the arena. What percentage would you need in order to put, I mean, you've obviously got Joyce and Dubois booked, and we're all excited yeah, about that, and we want look, it. We did that based upon selling out, and we were nigh on sold out. That's what it was. So we got, we're going to have to look at it and see what happens. But we're all in no man's land. No one knows what the next yeah. move's going to be. It's just so frustrating. I think it's frustrating for everybody, but. You know, you can't blame the government for that. It is what it is. Everywhere around the world, I see it. I mean, despite South America, I was reading this morning, um, uh, I'm not sure what one of the countries there, it, it was, it's like, I think it's Argentina, it's like gone through the roof. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we've had, our, we've had our difficult times here. I'm sure we're going to get some more spikes, but hopefully, like Sweden, it's happening in Sweden, because there's been so much of it, it will help, help to... Um, that, that the fatalities won't be as, as bad as they were and hopefully we can get back to some some new norm, whatever yeah. it's going to be. Can't affect, obviously, what is going on in the medical world, but I remember us in February in Las Vegas, Tyson yeah. puts in a world-class performance and you think to yourself, 
we're on the verge now of seeing an undisputed champion at some point. That must be frustrating as well, that that keeps getting knocked back because of everything that's going on in the world. It is. I mean, that frustration of that, and obviously for, the, for Tyson, and that you can't capitalise on it. I mean, capitalise on his ability mm. and that comeback, that, that you know, tremendous comeback that he had, where he came from to be there, yeah. was amazing. You know, we believed he could do it. And we are where we are now, but um, he wants to fight this year, so we've got to buy hook or by crook, try and get this return match on with Wilder. If we can't do that, then look at another, another scenario for him. Can that happen without fans? No. Unless somebody comes in with a huge site fee yeah. to let it happen, because as you know, the fight was the highest grossing heavyweight fight to ever have taken place in Vegas, and that money is required to make it viable for the boxers. So then, let's say somebody doesn't come in because maybe they can't recoup because a site fee for example so let's say it's middle east they come yeah. in with a lot of money i would imagine that they would do that to attract people to come over and see their fantastic they got, place they, they got covid problems there at absolutely the yeah. so then it gets knocked back and knocked back and knocked back so, so we, don't, we don't know where we are we, you know we, we look at various scenarios and you know bob aram and myself are working hard on different different things to try and make this happen because we you know our priority is to get Tyson back in the ring. What's the conversation's <coughs> been like with Tyson? I mean I keep keeping him up to date with him on Instagram but he sounds brilliant. I spoke to him again in, I spoke when I spoke to him on spoke to him on was it over the weekend, he was actually on a run. Hmm. He was talking to me while he was on a run. He said I'm doing that is the last mile. And he's you know he's fit. He's training four or five times a day. Yeah, so yeah. he's getting himself yeah, I mean when you look at where he was and what he's doing and he said himself, he's in a good place at the moment. He doesn't want it to go to waste. You know, he said he's never been so happy. And that was great to hear that. Fantastic to hear that. But he's a fighting man and he wants to fight, so we've got to make it happen. Mm. I'll come back to them in a minute. I want to talk to Daniel Dubois because I had a wonderful conversation with him earlier on. Obviously, he got a fight this weekend. We've seen at the weekend that banana skins do happen in the, in the heavyweight world. Do you, do you worry at all with him going into fights like this when you've got a Joyce fight on the horizon? I, w I don't like situations like that because you're looking at one fight. It's, I worry yeah. about the fighter looking at the fight head, but with him though, he doesn't. He's focused on what he's doing on Saturday. So hopefully he comes through that and then, then the both of them have got a real tough fight to think about. Mm. You know, it's, it's a make or break fight. What happens after that? You, you, he, he doesn't need to think about that. You do. So what? Well, you if know, he wins I, that I, fight I was hoping Tyson. that you know Tyson fights AJ. I was hoping that Dillian White would come for, and I was hoping that when we had this meeting, the winner of Joe Joyce and Daniel, and I was, you know, I made it very clear, you know, I think Daniel will win it. Daniel would go on and fight. We could do something with Dillian White. That's what I was looking to do. But that's all, that's all gone up in the air now. Has it? I mean, Dan, Daniel just said to me that he believes that he's now even further into his waters. But that's the fighter talking. Well, he's, got his, he's apparently got this rematch, hasn't he, that yeah. we're talking about. Yeah, it's a bad knockout that he suffered. Normally, the fighter gets stopped. He's out for a minimum 28, 30 days. When you're taking oxygen, you get knocked out that bad. You know, sometimes they knock it back to 40, 45 days. I find it strange this morning they were talking about getting a rematch on in November. Mm. You know, you, you, if it's, if it's, you know, if, got, if that was my fight, I wouldn't be rushing to do that to start with. And secondly, if they think that he, by fighting Povetkin and he beats Povetkin, that, then they're back to the scenario where he's got a fight with him immediately. He's got yes. a fight. That's not going to happen. The WBC have already said Povetkin is a year away, so that will stand, even if Dylan White, White was to yeah. beat him. So that's parked up now. So no need, no need to rush into that. So would you do Dubois White? Yeah. If he I'd, comes through the perfect fight? Yeah, I would do that, yeah. Look, the, 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 the offer, bar one fight, the offer we put out to Matron was for the best of British. And Liam Williams was a fight that was mandated to yeah. be a mandatory against Andrade. They've got Andrade. So that's what we were looking at. You know, Joe Joyce against Chisora. Let's find out who's the best British fighters. That's what we were about. How far down the line are you with those conversations? Nowhere. You know, the last thing was we we're going to have a meeting, so let's get the meeting on. I'm ready to go.